Hey there, welcome back to another video. Um, this one's going to be kind of a follow-up to the C6 FE series teardown where there was engine damage and the engine caused um, you know some damage, some collateral effects on the transmission requiring us to replace certain parts including the gear sets or at least the front rear planetary carriers as well as the pump body. So <clears throat> in that video I didn't really get into the damage of the pump. Uh, frankly, it's, you know, I wanted to keep that video under an hour if I could. I know it's maybe a couple minutes longer, but uh, I wanted to do a follow-up because the information I'm going to relate here is not going to be specific or just restricted to the Ford C6. It's going to apply to any automatic transmission where the pump is of the crescent design. So, meaning you have a crescent in the pump body and you have a drive and a driven gear that nest within that body and uh, the crescent, which is referred to as a priming crescent, is an integral part of that volume and or pressure, um, you know, development, generation, sustainment, if you will, um, and ultimately uh, the heart of the transmission and responsible for its proper function. So when you have a crescent style pump, the first thing you want to do when doing an inspection after you cleaned it off is to look at the crescent area, okay? Particularly the ends of the crescent. So this is the pump that came out of that unit, and uh, that's the gear set that you know is associated with it. And then this is a good use pump from the hard part supplier, and this is its corresponding gear set. So when you have wear in the crescent area of these kinds of pumps and the pump body, okay, and I'm not going to get into the stator, stator support, I mean that's kind of a whole separate discussion, I want to focus solely on just the bodies. If you have wear in the priming crescent, in this area here, okay, especially in the ends, on either side, but really on the drive gear facing side, you will not have anywhere near optimal pressure. Uh, depending on how severe the wear is, um, you may have a pump that barely functions at all. And it'll only give you um, good line pressure readings, maybe at idle, and then as soon as you, you know, try to test it at stall, you know, your readings are way, way low, abnormally low relative to where they should be. Um, you try to drive it like that, especially if you're driving in a you know, vehicle in a performance or heavy duty towing, hauling type application, but even a daily driver, you're not going to have anywhere near the amount of volumetric fluid flow so that you can get the line rise you need in the apply circuits. And as a result, all your you know clutch packs will burn. Now, backstory with this thing is that it came out of a 1976 uh, F250 or F350 extended cab. And um, my customer had purchased the engine and transmission along with the entire vehicle um, you know, from somebody else, knows very little about the history other than the uh, catastrophic engine failure that occurred while the vehicle was on the road driving. So it occurred at, I think, roughly highway speeds, 30, 40 miles an hour, something like that. Um, the engine itself was freshly rebuilt, and one of the uh, pistons had melted in the cylinders and causing, a, you know, basically a catastrophic failure. Uh, this had tertiary impacts for the transmission. It damaged the pump body, which we'll look at, you know, a little bit more detail in a second. It also took out... Um, the uh, gear sets, at least the planetaries. Now, the front planet, front planet had severe wear. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I'm not sure if this wear happened as a result of that engine failure, if this was actually put back like this during a previous overhaul, because this unit was rebuilt at some point in the past, probably rebuilt around the time the engine was rebuilt. It would make sense, right? But you see a lot of um, heavy thrust wear, you know, this is unusual. You don't see that on on planets and units that otherwise did not experience severe failures or were subjected to um, the after effects of a failure in another system or component. So either way, we replace both planets, um, you know, as part of the rebuild. But I didn't mention it in the teardown video because I didn't realize how bad this wear was until I inspected it after the fact. So that's why I wanted to do this video on it. So now let's take a look at the pump body that came out of this transmission. Now look at that surface. Okay, this is severely worn and it feels mirrory smooth and deformed. Okay, 
Now, when I was going through this unit, when we took the pan off, we saw a whole bunch of black material that looked, frankly, like clutch material. So I figured, you know, one or more of these applied elements, one or more of the clutch packs or the band was smoked. But they all looked fine. They had no issues. So all of that black material was this, you know, this color and material uh, coming off of the crescent there. So again, here's a good crescent. It's in good shape. Okay. It feels the same way consistently front to back, from side to side. Okay, the working surface is in good shape. You have some visual wear, but you don't have physical wear. Likewise, you have some visual wear here on the side wall of the pocket, but you don't have physical wear, grooves, heavy scoring, things of that nature. Okay, all the threads are in good shape. Now on this one, the side walls actually look okay. I mean, it looks the same. These all kind of more or less look the same. But you do have a little bit of scoring in this area right here, where I can actually feel that instead of just seeing it. You also have wear here. Okay, you have a little bit of wear here, but it's not as pronounced as it is here. But either way, the sidewall isn't the problem with this thing. Okay, the problem's right here. And you don't really need any more evidence than that to know that this needs to be replaced. All right, bushings. When you install a new bushing, because they both need it, you know, both of these bodies, the bushings are excessively worn, make sure that this oil groove exhausts toward the gears. And the, the uh, kind of dead end terminus faces out toward the seal. If you reverse that, then you're going to have a uh, fluid flow to the seal that's going to overwhelm that seal and it's eventually going to push past it and have a massive leak at the converter, you'll have to be constantly topping the transmission fluid off and more than likely you're going to damage the whole unit. So, um, you know, for those that are building, you're new to these units or E4Ds, 4100s, AODs, any Ford transmission that has this kind of one-way seal, or excuse me, one-way bushing, just be aware of it, that's all. All right, for gears, okay, these are the gears that came with, all right. Are these gears in perfect shape? No. All right, they got a little bit of wear, almost like witness marks. But the wear, again, is visual. It's not physical. Now, if you have a lip here, right here at the bevel, where the torque converter flats are engaged on the drive gear, you can take a very fine rat tail file and gently file that down. And it has to be minor in scope. It cannot be severe. Otherwise, just get a new set of gears. So here are the gears that came out of this, this pump. It's got some wear. It's got the same kind of wear, same characteristic wear that is typical of these units, but it's got an indentation right here, as you can see, right there, that I could feel. That's a second lip. Okay, you see something like this, you don't want to reuse these gears. And then check the body, check the teeth. The teeth can be worn, the crests, the two sides, etc. Okay, this, um, the driven gear can have scoring on the outer diameter. If it does, obviously don't use it. So this driven gear itself is okay, but you don't want to mix and match, or at least it's not my recommendation that you mix and match drive and driven gears. Um, you always want to have them as a set. They're not that expensive to replace new, so you know you can go with a new set of gears. Well, anyway, uh, like I said, I just want to do a follow-up video. Um, I have these circuits labeled forward and direct. I actually use this bad pump to do a video that is also associated with this transmission that is setting up the forward clutch pack that's why you see f and d there but um because i didn't have this one at the time i literally just got this in today now as far as the order of publication of these videos i'm probably going to publish this video I'm filming right now first um this will come immediately after 
the teardown inspection on this transmission, you know, that this pump came from, and that was done, or at least published, onto the channel on November 4th, 2024. So this video will be published two or three days after that, and then I'll do the forward drum video. So that's why that's labeled, and uh, that's why you will see this pump body being used in that other video, because I didn't have this one at the time. All right. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them below. If there's anything else you want to cover on Ford C6 pumps or the C6 in general, I'm doing these transmissions fairly frequently now, so go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll prioritize the video as soon as I can on a topic if I don't already have one on the channel on these transmissions. All right, until then, enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. And as always, thank you so much for your time and your views. Take care.